This is the fourth year that Ms. Vaughn and I have collaborated on this project. It's one of my favorites because we're using one of my absolute favorite tools, which is Google Drawings. But here's an example of the students from last year, what they created for Kepler 1D. Um, this is started as a blank canvas. This is all created from shapes. This is an original artwork. That's the goal. You guys are gonna create your own original poster in Google Drawings um, from shapes. I wanna show a couple others. So this is a project that has been done for a couple of years. The first year, these are a couple examples of ones that we've done. So I'm always amazed with what people come up with and I want you to dazzle me. So I have one young man here who says, I know how to use Google Drawing. So that means I expect his is gonna be fantastic. He's gonna dazzle us. I'll show you how we get into Google Drawing. It is a free tool that is available in your G Suite. So wow. to get there, you can go to your Google Drive. So you're at your Google Drive and you're gonna select new, more, and it lives under more. They hide the good stuff. So right here and then you select Google Drawings and it's gonna open up a blank canvas, okay? So now Google Drawings is, a, is also a feature that's built into Google Slides. If you ever go to Google Slides and say insert drawing, it will open up a mini version of this without you going to the same app, okay? So what we're gonna do is we've got our blank canvas. Thumbs up if you have a blank canvas. Awesome. What's a couple of things you wanna start off with is you wanna make sure you name it. So this is a practice one. Now if you already know what your planet or moon or dwarf planet is, go ahead and name it that. Put your, uh, but if not, you can just call it practice. All right, so this is my practice one. I've got my name on it. One of the best things about Google uh, Documents, all of them, they um, automatically save. I've got my blank canvas here. So we're going to first tell it that we want it to be like a, uh, a shape of a piece of paper, the size. Because right now, it's geared towards publishing it on the web. So we're going to go up here and we're going to say file. Scroll down and go to page setup. I'm going to change it from four by three to custom. A piece of paper is either eight and a half by five. So if you're holding paper like this, the way you write on it, eight and a half at the top, 11 down. If you wanted to flip your paper so it's sideways, it would be 11 by eight and a half. So we're going to go with eight and a half by 11. So you're going to change it to eight and a half by 11. Make sure it says inches and apply. Now I have a piece of paper. So we're going to first, do, for your one of the Chromebooks, it's two clicks, so it's a uh, two finger right click. And I want to press hold and I'm gonna say I wanna change the background. So if I go to background, I have two options. Solid means it's just gonna be one color. So I'm going to select, I want the background for this one to be a light green. That's what I'm choosing. You can choose any color you want. So I've got my background color, I've changed it. So next up, I want to give my planet uh, poster a title. I'm going to select insert. Text box is one option, but I want to jazz it up, so I want to go to word art. So if I use word art, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to switch it up and do Saturn. I'm going to type in Saturn, I'm going to hit enter. It's going to add a word art element that you've typed onto your canvas. That's cool, but I want it to be a little bit jazzier. I have options. Notice that when you're in it, that the toolbars up here are very similar to being a Google Doc or Google Slides. If you select an element like this, it now shows up. Notice how a bunch more tools showed up. So not selected. I select it. I have all these options. So those include being able to use the paint bucket to fill the shape. So maybe I want to change this to purple. Maybe I want to change the outline color from black to uh, red, but you can't really see it. So I'm going to go to the next line over and I'm going to make that bolder. So you can go in and customize that. You can also change the way the line looks to be really funky if you want. One of my favorite things is to kind of give it a 3D effect so that your, your title stands out a little bit more. So to give it a 3D effect, remember I can't do anything until I select it. When I select it, I'm going to copy it and make two of them. And watch what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do this. Copy. Paste. For you guys, because you're on the Chromebooks, I'm on the board, you're going to use Control-C, Control-V. Okay, that copies and pastes. So now I've got two. I'm going to select the one that's in the back. 
Right, it shifts. An arrow, it moves in one spot at a time. And I can line it up. If I just hit arrow, it moves in five spots at a time. If I just want to move it five spaces, I just hit the arrow. If I want to fine tune it, I hit shift and arrow, and it moves it one pixel at a time. So you can line it up exactly the way you want. Okay? You're not liking the font that's the default font, which is Arial. You hit that drop down and you can change and uh, get other fonts. If you don't see a font you like, you have the option of more fonts right here. So I uh, might want to switch it to audio wide, but I got to switch both of them so that they match. So we should have a title. Thumbs up, we've got at least a title. All right, so now we need to create a planet. So planets, what shape are they? Circle. All right, so we're going to go up here. Insert, shape, circle. You have to draw it on your canvas to be the size that you want. We've got our circle, some elements we want to change. Anything that you put on the canvas is going to show up. If I wanted my planet over here and only it looks like it's rising on the horizon, only what is on the canvas is going to show up when you export it as an image. So if you want to get crafty, I've seen them like that. I've seen people where they've done this so that it looks like you just see the planet arising over the top of it. You have options. Anything that's not on the canvas um, will not show up when you export it as an image. So let's go back to our original planet shape. Here we go. So some elements to change. Notice I can now change um, color. Instead of just doing a solid color, a lot of our planets have like multicolors, right? Because of the atmosphere and the environment and their physical features. So I want us to go to gradients. Now, I could just choose this blue, and now it's kind of got a little bit of a shimmer in the middle. I could choose to do orange, and it's got a little bit of reflection. But if you want to customize it because your planet has multiple colors, which is the case for a lot of them, I'm going to show you how you do that. So you select, you do your paint bucket under gradient. And I'm going to go to custom. So when I go to custom, that means I can add in the colors that I want to customize it. So if I want to start with this orange color, and then I want to add another one, and I want it to be about here, and I'm going to change that one so that it's purple. So I've added purple. I'm going to hit add again. Now I want this one to be red. So now notice how I'm getting this multicolor effect. If I want to change it from being radial to being linear so it's like lines on the planet, I can change it to linear. If I want to change the angle of it so that they go this way on the planet, I can do that as well. So now I'm going to hit OK. So now I've got this multicolor effect inside my planet. So click on it, bucket, gradient, custom. It remembers the most recent one you did, but if I want to change it, I can add other colors, so now I want to add a gray, and I will put the gray right here. So now notice how it's changing it. I can dial this up where I want it to be, so if you want like a wide band or a thin band, you can do that. Just click OK, and it does it inside, and it changes the color. So now I'm going to show you guys how to do rings. To create rings, we're going to go to insert, we're going to insert a shape. There is a specific shape that I use. It's in this middle section. It's in the third row. It's the fourth one over. It looks like a little rainbow. I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to draw it. So I drew the first part of the ring. Now, I did it with that same color. I can change it. I, want the I actually want the ring to be like an orange ring that's around it. But that's only half of a ring. So now I want to get rid of that little edge. So I've got this half shape. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to copy and paste. For you guys, what is it? To copy and paste. Control C, Control V. Thank you. Control C, Control V. So copy and paste. So now I have two. This little handlebar, this little circle, lets me flip this shape. So I'm going to grab that circle. And I'm going to flip it upside down. Over here, how do I line those up? Remember what did I do? I used that shift trick. So bring it over, bring it up. And now I've got a ring. 
But what's wrong with my ring? It's, it's, it's not inside the planet. It's not around the planet. So I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say order. I'm going to send it to the back. Now I've got a ring around my planet. What do we think? Pretty cool? Is that good? Okay, so we got rings. So we also have physical elements on our planet, like blemishes or texture that you want to add. So in order to do that, we can use various shapes. So we go to insert another shape. If you look at there's one that's called callouts that kind of looks like a, the pow sound like in a comic book, but you can use one of those or a cloud one. So I'm going to use this one and draw it here. <laughs> and I can change those same elements. So if I use that gradient, there's my custom one. I get rid of that little outside line. So now I'm using that same color scheme, but adding the, but I'm using it a different shape. So now I've got a different element on it. So you can use one of those. Okay. You can use, there's some others that look a little bit different. So let's go look at another one. Call out. There's one that's a. So I can use a cloud one and do the same element. So you can add little features so it looks like there's some different textures to your planet. Add some shapes, some shapes that are already available in their shape bank to customize it. So we want to use um, some other tools to be able to freehand draw shapes or elements. So to do that, you'll notice that there's a, uh, you can insert a line. And to insert a line, you've got a couple of options. You can just do a straight line, which you can customize. You can use arrows, things like that. But we're going to look at first the curve line. A curve line lets you be able to uh, let you draw an element. Every time I touch or click, for you guys, it's going to be click. It drops a point, and then I can connect it back. So now I've made a custom shape that I can use again. Those fill in the boxes, colors, take out the elements, go back to select. And I can resize this, I can turn it, and I can add it as an element to my planet. I wanted to put a custom shape to give those elements because I noticed that on one of the planets that it looked like it had a thicker atmosphere at the top or a physical feature at the top that you wanted to show. We're gonna start with the curve one. So for this, you're gonna draw, use the mouse click, lets it drop a point. And then I've made a new shape. Now, when I go back to select, notice if I were to double click on this, it's going to show where my drop points were. So I could actually decide if I wanted this to come in a little bit more, I can now customize my shape. Okay? And then I can fill using my color. I might want to use a gradient on this one this time. Get rid of that line on the outside. Bring this one over. Oh, okay. Okay, so now I've added another element. Okay, I'm gonna show you two more drawing things and then I'm gonna answer questions. So up here again, that, that was using the curve line. There's another one called the polyline. I'm gonna answer questions in one second. The polyline does it with straight lines, but I can make geometric shapes. So if I wanted to draw my own custom shape that has straight lines, versus curved lines, I can use the one that looks that says it's the polyline. The last option is scribble. So scribble is if you just want to draw an element, it's not going to be a full shape. So if I wanted just to draw some lines across, I can draw the line. I can customize it by changing the colors. So I'm going to select my line. I can change the color. I might want it to be yellow. I want it to be really big. Okay. And I want to resize it so that it fits exactly on my plant. To move it, I can move it anywhere. I can select it. If I wanted to turn it so that my line actually was diagonal or horizontal, and then I wanted to bring it in. So I can customize and move a line. Now, I can also change it to be, once I've drawn the shape that I want, to be that dotted line shape or one of the other options. So I can take my line and customize it. Now, the one difference between the poly and the curve shape 
And the scribble is, it does not connect and become something you can fill. You can only change the color of the line. So once you select it, check the color at the top. Either use the paint bucket or the shape. Remember, once you select it, so one of the other elements is for shapes. So I drew some custom ones. They're pretty, uh, but you can also, so those are ones that I just drew that were custom. Under the insert shape options, there are what they call call outs. There's these really cool stars that give a good effect that you can draw little stars. Uh, so you can put little star elements like that, or you can use those stars for the sky as well. So if I want to, so you can use that one, and you might decide that you want to make it the same size or little, littler, or larger, smaller, larger. You could go in and make it just the size you want, and then use that Control C, Control V to make a bunch of them that are the same size to fill in your plan. I did want to point out a trick. So as you're building things and you're doing, you've got your plan and you place things exactly where you want them, or you've done your title and you want, you like the way the title looks together, but it's not in the right spot. You want to use a, uh, an option to group things. Whoa. So to group something, I'm going to use the select and I'm going to click and go all around Saturn. Notice when I did that, it gave me two blue boxes. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose to group it. When I do that, it becomes one element now. I don't have to worry about them getting separated. How do you do that again? So you drag it around. So I'm going to do the same thing with my planet. I like everything on my planet the way it is. I'm going to select, see how it selected everything, right click, group. Now when I do that, it's like it's one image. See now if I move it, everything stays where I wanted it. So that was a question. If you are hitting a draw line, in order to turn it off, you got to go back to select that arrow at the top so that it turns off the drawing. Well, the last thing I would suggest, and I have some people that are already starting on this, is that you can actually build about any shape you want to build. So, For example, um, this is an example of, now these are not planet shapes, this is just an activity that I did. So I was challenged to recreate each one of these shapes. So it looks like an icon, but I've created them. So, but with using shapes, so if you want to have an astronaut, or if you want to have a rocket, you can use different shapes and put it together. So this is actually, uh, there's the elephant was a challenge because I had to figure out what were the different shapes. Um, so starting with the body. So the same thing if you wanted to build an astronaut or a rocket. Think about, look at a, look at an uh, image and break it down into what the shapes are. See if you can say, hey, if I use this, I can use that for the astronaut's helmet. I could use this for the body and so forth. Okay? For example, this one's a pretty cool uh, one because we don't know what life might be like on that planet, but they've got all the elements here. Here's Io. We also have, here's another one where they created the astronaut out of shapes, okay? So you can be real creative with using shapes to uh, design. Here's one. We got NASA, the astronaut, planted uh, a flag on Saturn, okay? So you have options with your shapes to create something unique and original. So the goal is you're not pulling in any clip art. Don't go find it on Google. You can look at an image to reference and to get inspiration, but the goal is that you're going to create all of the images that are in it. All right, so thumbs up if you learned something new about Google Drawings.